Hello and welcome to another complete OCR GCS EPE lesson. In this video, we'll be covering the second and final learning objective in chapter three on movement analysis, which is all about the planes of movement and axes of rotation. We'll begin with the three planes of movement. And the planes of movement are essentially imaginary lines that dissect the body and are used to explain how it moves. The frontal plane runs vertically, dividing the body into front and back, otherwise known as anterior and posterior sections. As you can see in this diagram, the frontal plane clearly divides the body into front and back sections. Now movements in this plane are always sideways, so a good example is performing a jumping jack which involves abduction and adduction at the shoulder and hip joints. Next we have the transverse plane which divides the body into upper and lower, otherwise known as superior and inferior sections. Movements in this plane are rotational, for example turning the head to breathe when performing the front crawl or pivoting in netball. Again we'll look at the diagram and the transverse plane there clearly dividing the body into upper and lower sections. The final plane that you need to know about is the sagittal plane which divides the body into left and right sides. The movements in this plane are flexion and extension, in other words forwards and backwards movements, so good examples include the bending and straightening of the knee, hip and ankle joints while running. Now that's everything you need to know on the planes of movement, so we'll move on on to the axes of rotation. So an axis is a straight line or central point about which an object rotates. The frontal axis runs horizontally from the front to the back of the body, which we can see on the left hand side of the diagram here. A really good example of rotation around the frontal axis can be seen when performing a cartwheel in gymnastics. Next, the transverse axis runs horizontally from the right to the left of the body, and rotation around this axis are forwards and backwards. For example, a gymnast rotates around the transverse axis when performing a somersault. This time the image in the middle of the diagram demonstrates the transverse axis running from the left to the right or the right to the left of the body. Okay, the final axis that you need to know about is the longitudinal axis, which runs vertically from head to toe. So imagine a line that runs through the head all the way down to the feet. For example, a figure skater rotates rotates around the longitudinal axis when performing a spin otherwise known as a pirouette. Okay, so that was everything for the planes of movement and axes of rotation, but before we finish, we'll take a look at a couple of exam questions to put some of this information into context. So figure two shows the performance of a gymnastic skill. Name the axis of rotation in figure two, and that's of course the transverse axis, which runs horizontally from the left to the right of the body. Now on to part B. If the gymnast completes the same gymnastic move backwards, the axis axis of rotation remains the same. Is this statement true or false? Draw a circle around your answer. And of course that is true. Next, figure five shows a fitness exercise. So we have a jumping jack. Name the plane of movement for the exercise shown in figure five. So that one is the frontal plane, which runs vertically, dividing the body into front and back sections. Next, figure 10 shows an image of a dancer performing a pirouette that involves spinning around on one foot. A pirouette is a movement around the longitude axis. Is this statement true or false? And of course it's true because the longitudinal axis is the one that runs from the head down to the feet. Finally, name the plane of movement at the elbow during a biceps curl. And that one is the sagittal plane, which is the plane that divides the body into left and right sections and describes forwards and backwards movements. In other words, movements that involve flexion and extension. Okay, so that was everything for the second and final learning objective on topic 1.0 three movement analysis. Join me next time as we move on to topic 1.4 on the cardiovascular and respiratory systems.